it's a giant. Oh, I got a giant. Okay, today I'm on Lake Erie. I have absolutely perfect conditions to show you how I sight fish in clear water for smallmouth bass. All right, so I got a one-two punch. I always like to have a couple of different rods. I actually got a fish moving in right now. He's moving in hot. Oh boy, here we go. I wonder if he's gonna bite the big jig. So I have two different baits here. I've got a big jig on, Machine Lure Works football jig. Sometimes it's too aggressive in the shallow water, but it really helps. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> that did not take that. That was literally, literally my first pitch of the day. First pitch of the day. Unbelievable. Got him, got him. <laughs> wow, he choked that too. Sweet. Get that rolled in here and just saw like those big ones right away. It was deeper though. So anytime you see that type of stuff too, like that was a single boulder by itself and there was just something slightly darker on it. Not a big fish. That's good, there's fish here. Whoa, super strong. Yeah, mean little dude, mean. Yes, number two. That's on that smelt head, eighth ounce. And it's a Gary Yamamoto, Gary Yamamoto grub. Simple. Little guy though. Sweet. Came off a boulder, single boulder by itself on this big giant flat here and just saw something like a little bit darker just off the rock. Made it cast past the rock. So if this is the boulder, you know, a lot of times I don't want to cast on it. I'll actually cast past it and make that fish travel to the bait and it actually shows up better because it was dark so I was able to see it was a fish. So. That's two in a very short period of time. So if you are seeing fish in an area, you know, expand on the area, move around a bit. Just zigzag the area. You know, a lot of times I put my plotter on my graph and I'll leave that there and it will show me, you know, it will show me where I've been, where I haven't been with this, this red line here, right? I don't know if you guys can see that. When you find fish in an area, there's a lot of times that there's more in that area or it's a route where they're coming from deep water or leaving the shallows to go back to deep water. So, so that fish came from four feet. Last one came from almost six feet. That's the plan. So I'm gonna expand on this area, make sure I've got the sun best I can on my back so that I'm able to see and take advantage of all this light that we have, because this is amazing. Like you want the sun, you put it on your back and just cover ground and use your polarized glasses and look for anything different. Take a look, watch it for a second look for movement. You know, if you think you see something that's darker or movement, make a cast to that object and be ready because usually they jump on it. Hits the water, boom, they're on it. And if you miss them, they're gone. A lot of times they won't come back, they won't bite again this time of year. If you guys can see that, see these cracks here? See the shadows all up and down these? They'll sit and stuff like that. So these are things that I'll, I'll really focus on. Whenever I see like anything abnormal or anything that's got that color change, you know, you want to just pay attention and take your time and look at it because there's a good chance like that's the stuff they'll kind of like, they'll hide in, they'll swim up and down that. So little things like that, that's the type of stuff that I'm, I'm always looking for because it's something different in this area and it's something that the fish can kind of get up beside and hide beside or swim from deep water or back to deep water. And I want to show you what I'm looking for when, I'm, when I talk about shallow smallmouth. Um, what I've done here is I've actually gone into my menu and I've highlighted in this green and the red, I've highlighted the depths that I want to fish. So today I was talking about fishing in water that's less than 12 feet. So the green here is 12 feet or less anywhere on the map that you see this. And then the red colored water here is five feet or less. So that's going to help me eliminate a lot of water that I'm not planning to fish and allowing me to stick to that plan of fishing these, you know, shallower areas especially on a day like today when I have that bright blue skies and I have lots of sunlight, I want to take advantage of the best opportunities 
to see fish in these shallower depths. And that seems to be from that nine o'clock till two, three o'clock window. That, that time frame of the day gives me the best light to see bottom and to see fish. So. You gotta be kidding me, Polly. They're nipping at it. It's a big one too. Got him. Oh, it's a giant. Oh, I got a giant. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Those are the ones right there. I just, oh my gosh. Oh my, whoa. No way. So just because it's August and the water's, oh! oh. Oh! Oh, it's like a five pounder. Whew, that one I lost, man. Let me tell you something. It's gonna bother me. <laughs> Got him. I got him. Oh yeah. Oh, lost it. Ah, oh, either way, change it up. So I threw him the grub, had a bump, missed it. They followed, pitched back with a football jig with a swim bait and hooked up a good one, but he came off. Oh, where'd they go? That guy destroyed my little swim bait. So I have a pretty simple rig. Got that football jig, machine lures football jig. And then just put a little mini swim bait on the back of it. You could put a grub on the back. You could put a net on the back, whatever, whatever you want. It's like a chunky goby. And then this is pretty heavy. Like this is a, a heavy jig for the shallows, but see how I'm rocking that jig? A lot of times the heavier jig will let me pin it. And I'm not really dragging it too much because remember I'm looking for fish. I actually see these fish before I make a cast. So if I can get this and pin it on the bottom, and get, you know, a lot of times in the shallows, I prefer the opposite. I'll use as light a bait as possible. You know, the sink rate is very important, but in this situation, you know, it allows me to pin it on the bottom, but something to consider. You know, you move it, a lot of people like twitch the rod and stuff, but a lot of times this movement here, that little subtle lift, so you're pulling slack, make it tight, pull it slack, make it tight. A lot of times that's what will make a smallmouth that's looking at a bait, jump all over it. Got one going for it right now. Got him. First drop. Big one. All right. So that's the difference. So the last fish wanted nothing to do with it because he already saw us. But if you can get, if you can get a jump on them, before they see you, that's the deal. A lot of times they'll just come over and they, and they jump on it before the bait even hits the bottom. So that's a good fish too. I'm gonna grab him, I don't need another. There's another one down there too. I'm gonna go for the double. I'm gonna get greedy and go for a double up here. Rolling the dice, rolling the dice. So there's times where you can get two. They'll get fired up, They're, they'll see their friends get hooked up. They're super competitive. So there's times you can have another bait ready and get a second fish. That guy there went down for it, but didn't want it. So let's just land this one here. Let's land this guy here. Oh, there we go. Got him. Got him right there. So that's it right there. So get the jump on them. You know, use your glasses. Look for those fish in the shallows. And when you see them, a lot of times if you can make a cast them before they swim to the boat and before they see you, you actually see that one sheeny. Smelt it again with the grub. Um, get a cast on them before they see the boat and before they see you. You can get them to react, be ready, because they jump on it quick.
tires all over it. Two of them right here. I've got two good smallmouth following us. We just stopped for lunch. The wind just picked up. I don't know if you can see it, but there's like white caps starting now. Let's see if I can get one of these guys to go. Oh, he pumped. I'm slow the bait down. The boat's moving. I'm gonna slow the bait down, open my bail, let it rest. I can see the fish, he's totally engaged with that bait. A lot of times, once they bite once, I can't get them again. So I'm gonna try this other fish if I can. I'm just gonna pick it up, drop it here. He's turned. Here comes the other one, he's coming in hot. Yeah, that's the problem. Once you spook them, and once they know you're there, a lot of times you can't, I, you know, you can't get them to go. I did have a chance there, so that's too bad. Change it up. New bait. Oh yeah. I got him. I got him. Oh yeah. Oh. Lost it. Oh. Either way, change it up. So I threw him the grub. Had a bump. Missed it. They followed. Pitched back with the football jig with the swim bait and hooked up a good one. But he came off. Oh. Where'd they go? Do I get one more chance? Dang it. That's that. Oh my God. That's the one. Oh. So I don't know why these big ones come in here this time of year, but if you just keep working patiently through and, and try to get that first cast, that was literally the first cast when I saw that fish. Fish did know I was there. Let's just see if he's ready. I don't know. Ooh, that's a big fish. It's a big one, guys. I think it's a big one. Maybe it's not that big, but it's big for me. Oh. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'll take it. Whew, that's it. <laughs> right there. So shallow summertime smallmouth, it's August, eastern basin of Lake Erie, polarized glasses, and I'm sight fishing. I'm actually looking for fish and I'm hunting. Yeah, so it's just that one-two punch, real simple. I hit him with the grub, you know, the slower fall, smaller profile. And if they didn't want that, you know, some of the fish wanted that faster drop with the football jig and then just like rocking it in place. So, you know, and the football jig, you know, they'd either eat it or you could feel them, like you'd actually feel them bump it. So that's been today's approach, keeping it simple. I'm using the highlights on my, you know, my Lake Master charts, and that's gonna help me identify the areas quicker. So I've highlighted anything less than 12 feet in green and then I did the shallower portions in the red section that I showed you. So those are the other things and good, good polarized sunglasses. So take advantage of the sun when you have it in August, head shallow, look for shallow smallmouth, try some of these tricks and you are going to have a ton of fun.